Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at McFarlane, DC Multiverse, Silver Age, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern. This is the newest Hal Jordan figure, and possibly the best one they've released so far. I pre this guy at the McFarlane Toy Store, got the bundle, used the coupon code, and he arrived today. This is part of McFarlane's digital wave. You get the physical figure, and a code for the digital figure as well. I have absolutely no interest in that digital nonsense, so I won't even bother redeeming the code. This guy comes with a total of four hands. A lantern battery, two energy fix for his hands, display stand, collector's card, and the code for the digital figure. So let's take a look at the package. As you can see at the top, 22 moving parts. DC Direct, I find it interesting they label this DC Direct, not McFarland DC Multiverse, but it's all the same thing. McFarland Digital, Green Lantern, ages 14 plus. Here he is with the accessories. One side, Green Lantern from the Silver Age. Other side is pretty blank. On the back, here's how Jordan posed up. And at the bottom, there's his barcode, if that helps. So with no further ado, let's open him up. And I did get the entire way from the McFarlane Toy Store, Batman, Green Lantern, and Aquaman. All right, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all the accessories laid out. He has a display stand, a collector's card, the code for the digital figure, a total of four hands, lantern battery, and two energy effects for his hands. Before we take a look at all that, let's talk about and check out the figure. So this is Hal Jordan, arguably the most known and popular Green Lantern. This is a classic version from the Silver Age. And you know what? He looks fantastic. So let's take a look. Starting with his head here. Head looks spot on like Hal Jordan. From the hair, it's wavy, part of the side. The domino mask, the white eyes, the kind of half grin or smirk. It screams Hal Jordan. Very nice head sculpt. Then his costume. It's got black sleeves, white gloves, green in the middle with the Green Lantern logo. This is done on the Blue Beetle Booster Gold body, which is sort of a generic body they use for a lot of the heroes that don't have too many sculpted details. The body's not bad. I'm not a fan of how they did the two abs at the top, separate from the rest of the sort of torso stomach piece. Beyond that, I like the body just fine. You can see his power ring on his middle finger there. Double jointed knees, double jointed elbows appropriate sculpted boots diaper seems to be just a little bit loose but not bad overall I would say they delivered on the best Hal so far and a closer look at his face and head sculpt cannot say enough good things about this head sculpt very nice and it has a good paint job to match and here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Now check out the accessories, starting off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand. It's a typical McFarland stand, except this one says McFarland Toys Digital, sort of advertising for their digital figures. Honestly, I think I would prefer it to be a blank stand. Very small, very basic. And for his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of Hal Jordan Green Lantern. He has a lantern battery, Green Lantern. On the back side, there is a description. If you want to read that, pause now. And now check out the digital card. McFarland Toys Digital. On the back, you can scratch this off for a code to redeem the digital figure. Now, I'm not interested in digital figures at all. I'm not going to hate on you if you're interested in them, but I will never claim to even begin to understand it. And from what I've seen, they're priced the same as a physical figure, which makes no sense to me at all. Now let's look at his hands. He has a total of four of them. One right hand, and three left hands. Here he is, with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. Here he is, with an alternate left hand. This is a gripping hand. And then yet another alternate left hand. This is a completely open outstretched hand. I have no idea why they felt the need to include this hand with this guy. Here are his energy effects. We've seen this accessory released several times. It's done in a semi-transparent green plastic, sort of lantern energy that go around his fists. Fists will go inside. Here's Hal Jordan utilizing those energy effects in an action pose. And here's his lantern battery. It's also cast in a semi-transparent green plastic, which I don't think it should be, because this is not a construct, this is an actual physical item they use to recharge their lantern rings. But maybe it's just supposed to be glowing lantern energy, whatever. Like I said, Semi-transparent plastic has a traditional Green Lantern look to it. Here's Hal holding and carrying that lantern battery. And here's Hal charging his power ring with a lantern battery. 
Like I said before, this guy is using the Blue Beetle body, which was first introduced in the Blue Beetle and Booster Gold 2-pack. It's been used many a time as a generic base body for figures. Obviously, their heads are totally different. As we go further down, looks like the torso is the same. It's got that weird sort of two abs on top of the six-pack. The top part looks very disconnected. The stomach looks to be the same. The diaper is different. The arms look to be the same. His fist is a little bit different, but he has the power ring. The legs look to be the same, even the boot cut, which has so many times inaccurately been reused. It's very appropriate on Hal here. But take Booster Gold, for example. They left the boot cut there and just painted around it. Looks so dumb, but looks fantastic on this guy. Here are all the McFarland DC Multiverse figures utilizing the Blue Beetle and Booster Gold body. There are a total of 12 in front of you. I know the upcoming Mr. Zaz uses the same body. In the Plastic Man wave, Plastic Man uses parts of him, and Psycho Pirate from the Crisis wave also uses parts, but these guys have the entire upper and lower torso, with maybe some slight modifications on certain parts. If you're used to collecting Hasbro Marvel Legends or Mattel DC Universe Classics, they love to utilize the same body and just repaint it, crank it out for a ton of different characters, even more so than McFarlane. But this is something McFarlane was known for not doing for the first couple of years. Boy, have things changed. Now they're taking a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories and now for his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing right at 7 inches tall, which can translate to just under 18 centimeters. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course you can rotate side to side, you can look up and down about that much, you can tilt his head from one side to the other, shoulders on a ball joint goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees, up down around, all that good stuff. He's got this butterfly ring between his shoulder and chest area, increasing the range of motion and covering the large gap that would be there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrists can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. In his torso, he's got a ball joint. Rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist. Rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, very good range of motion in the torso area. I'd say you get a little more of the torso than the waist on this guy. Legs completely does the splits. McFarland style hip joints. They go forward about that much. Back not much at all. Double jointed knees. And then his ankles. Forward and back. Rotate. Tilt. Rock. And of course, to articulation. Here's a look at Hal Jordan floating in the sky utilizing his lantern energy. And here he is with the two energy effects around his hands. And then a close-up of Hal Jordan. Excellent head and face sculpt. Now let's check him out. Next is some other action figures. Starting off with some other Hal Jordan figures. Here's this Silver Age Hal on the left. Next to the previous version of Hal from the Dawnbreaker 2-pack on the right. We have a classic Silver Age version and a more modern version. Now the classic one is definitely a better figure. Look at those giant gorilla arms on the previous Hal Jordan. The hands are so big and the arms are so long. I'll probably be using the Silver Age one in more of my displays and scenarios, but if I have a modern roster of Greenlander Core, I might just have to use the other one. Hopefully, they'll give us more and more traditional versions of HAL. And here he is, next to the DC vs. Vampires HAL Jordan Green Lantern. Then, with both the HAL Jordan as Parallax figures. The one on the left is a Walmart exclusive, and the one on the right is a Glow in the Dark Amazon exclusive. Here are all of McFarland's HAL Jordan figures. Out of five of them, only two are not evil. Here's the Silver Age Hal, next to my DC Direct and DC Collectibles Hal Jordan figures. That zombie Hal on the right makes for a perfect bow damage or wounded Hal Jordan. Then, with NECA's Hal Jordan figure. And now, with a Mattel DC Nurse Classics Hal Jordan. Here are all the different Hal Jordan figures I have from various companies. Now let's check them out, next to some other McFarland Green Lantern figures. Here he is, next to McFarland's previous normal Hal Jordan figure. And here he is, next to Alan Scott, the original OG Green Lantern. Then, next to Jon Stewart, arguably the second most popular Green Lantern, after his appearance on Justice League Unlimited. And now, with the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern, the Green Lantern of the 90s. Here he is, next to Kilowog, the first Green Lantern mega figure. Then, next to a Green Lantern version of Sinestro. And finally, next to a couple of versions of Bruce Wayne as Green Lantern. Here are all of the McFarlane DC Multiverse Green Lantern figures. The next ones to come out. There is a Hal Jordan 
as Spectre, Planet of Chase variant from Christ on Infinite Earth, Minds on the Way. There's also a John Stewart in the Plastic Man Wave. My Plastic Man Wave is also on the way. And there's also a Platinum version of that John Stewart from the Plastic Man Wave. So three more Green Lanterns and Route. Here are all the different Lantern figures that McFarlane has made. We have blue, yellow, red, black, and Green Lanterns. The next Lantern figure that's coming out that's not a Green Lantern is going to be the Platinum Chase variant of the Collector's Edition Captain Boomerang. That's a White Lantern version. Now let's check him out. Next is some other recently released McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to the rest of this NTF Digital Wave. We have the Rebirth Batman, the Silver Age Hal Jordan, and the DC Classics Aquaman. Here's Kyle Rayner, next to the Kilowog and Kyle Rayner Green Lantern 2-pack. And here he is, next to the Walmart exclusive DC vs. Vampires Nightwing and Wally West Flash. Then, next to the Entertainment Earth exclusive Sketch White Knight Azrael and the Amazon exclusive Go in the Dark Hal Jordan Parallax. And now, with the GameStop exclusive Arkham Knight Batman in his prestige suit and the DC Rebirth Batman Frostbite Edition, here's Hal Jordan next to the Crisis on Infinite Earth Wave Collective Build Monitor. And here he is, next to most recent Batwave. We have the Anne Hathaway Catwoman from Dark Knight Rises, both Platinum and Batpod editions, the Christian Bale Batman from the Dark Knight Hong Kong Skydive, both Platinum and Unmasked versions, and then Batfleck from Batman vs Superman. And finally, next to the Nightfall Nightwing and the DC Classics Smiling Superman. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how it fits in, both scale and style-wise. In case you want to know which lines you can mix them with, since he's a McFarland toy, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarland Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland Toys, all 7-inch scale. And now, with some Jack-specific wrestling figures and some DST or Diamond Select toys, here he is, next to an empty Tupperware container. And here he is, next to some DC Direct and NECA figures. Then, with both some Mattel and Jazzwares wrestling figures. And now, with some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. Next, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, with some SH figure arts and some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, I think this is a fantastic Silver Age Hell Jordan figure. Now my only complaints about this guy would be the blue beetle body, which actually works pretty good for him. I just don't like the two abs that are on the top part of the torso. And then the costume is just a little bit old school and dated. And as much as I like that costume, I really want a modern version of Hal Jordan to be done this well. I do like the Hal Jordan from the Dawnbreaker pack, but looking at him next to this guy, his arms are way too long and his hands are way too big. This guy's sculpt and paint job are excellent. I cannot say enough good things about the head and face sculpt. Very, very well done. His accessories, I actually don't like those energy effects for his hands. I'd rather have traditional constructs. Articulation is everything you expect from a modern McFarlane DC Multiverse figure. If I were to rate this guy, I want to give him an 8 out of 10. It's not exactly my costume of choice. I don't really like the sort of wife beater look on the green shirt. But it's a very nice figure. I think I'm going to stick with that rating 8 out of 10. Kind of teetering with a 7.5, but I think he's going to land at a solid 8. Considering I'm not a huge fan of the Blue Beetle body, I think it works great on this guy. And considering it's mostly reuse, very, very well done. This is what I call smart reuse. Good job, McFarland. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.